everybody, and welcome to the Phantom Flux Podcast, episode 40. Um, um, hate you. I hate you. hate you so hate much. You. I'm KCW, currently eating a burger. It's a mm-hmm. burger, too? Fuck, I hate you. Yep. I yeah. had a burger last night. Double burger. Double? Mm-hmm. Too far. Delicious. Too far. Anyway. So, yeah. And uh, with me, we have... Um, hang on. Don't talk with your mouth full, Casey. Yeah. It's all better yeah. than that. <laughs> all right. So, uh, <laughs> with me, we have Slicer. I'm starving because I woke up to find my bagels were blue. Um, and furry. Mm. Hmm. So I swear I have so much sympathy for you right now. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly wish you could experience this burger. It's so amazing. Uh, mm. Somebody Zero. else know. I ate Pop-Tarts, and I still feel angry. Oh, I'm making people sad. And Kenji. If I had a nickel for everyone on this podcast better looking than me, I would have no nickels. You'd have a nickel. I have no nickels. One of us is wearing a mask. No, you would have a 5P coin. You would have a 5P coin. One of us is wearing a mask. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, we should start with zero for what we're doing. So what are we doing? What are you doing, zero? So my parents got back from Mexico, and uh, they got souvenirs, and I got some Mexican candy, which is nice, a little bit weird, but nice. Um, A Lucidor mask, which I found out may or may not be an American wrestler, which was kind of upsetting when I discovered that. It is. Who is it supposed to be so I can get a picture? Sin Cara. S-I-N-C-A-R-A. So, okay. I, I don't think it looks exactly like that. I'll look it up just to make sure. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't look exactly like his. It's got a similar eye thing from what I'm saying, but it's not... Exactly the same. It's got the fucking cross on the forehead and everything. <laughs> okay, yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's almost exactly the same. Almost. I think I maybe think it's just a different color, Jesus and he has like, like eighteen, mi- and he has like eighteen million colors for his. After mask. looking at it again, I'm pretty sure you're actually right, Kenshi. <laughs> Gosh darn it. <laughs> Whatever. I have a Sin Cara mask. I'm okay with that. That's still pretty cool, right? Yeah. Sure. Also, I'm super professional. Yeah, yeah, I noticed yeah. that. I, I, I also asked for a black sombrero so I could wear it while mowing my lawn. They didn't get it for me because they didn't realize I was going to wear it while mowing my lawn. But if I did, then mowing the lawn would be a very fun thing. Indeed. I think it. I think it'd be kind of hot, actually. I can't imagine. Yeah, you are... sing while you're doing it. Yeah. I'd have to sing. That kind of thing. I feel like right? somebody would. I feel like either somebody would think I'm a Mexican or they would think I was racist. Probably both. <laughs> hmm. Have to be a racist if you're Mexican. I don't know. Uh, I am a fourth Mexican though, so there's that. Quarter. Yeah. What, whatever. It's the same thing. If you're a fourth Mexican, that means there's three other Mexicans. <laughs> yes, That's right. a good point, yes. <laughs> uh, so, other than that, um, this week my... You know, you know, a couple episodes we had the title, Windows 8 Sucks, and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it really, really does, because... Mm-hmm. Um, there's, I, I didn't realize this. I didn't learn about anything about it or do any investigation under it until after the fact. But there is a thing called Fast Startup mm-hmm. where it can cause boot errors with your computer so your computer doesn't boot up. Now, that happened, and I could not fix it at all because the command prompts that I was trying to do weren't working. The system refresh wasn't working. The system restore wasn't working. Nothing was working. I couldn't even, like, clear the entire computer to go and do stuff. So what I had to do was I had to... And I didn't even have my old disks from Windows 8. 
at all because it was it came installed on my computer. So I had to go and I had to get another Windows 8 disk, put it in my computer. Then I had to basically use that to delete everything on my computer because the repair options on that thing didn't work either. And it was just, uh, I had to install Windows 8 again onto my computer and delete everything that was on my computer. So I lost everything. Um, um, yeah. So, I'm sorry, but me and mm. Zero told you, I mean, me and Slicer told you so. <laughs> yeah. Um, good, news is, like, good, seven. good news is I always put my writing on the fanfiction doc manager. So it's always there, even if my computer gets destroyed. Well, so, lovely. yeah. Um, however, I did lose everything for the Phantom Flux game. Uh, Literally everything. I mean, even if I boot up the, the sort of early version that I uploaded, I, co- I wouldn't be able to edit it. So, yeah. Oh, I thought he was dead. To... I'm gonna. Ha- I-, I might actually redo it because there was a lot I could have done better with it. Oh, you know, you know better now. So yeah. Yeah. Um. Also. So yeah, I I have a problem. I have a problem when you go and you make an operating system and you hide an option that causes computers to crash. And then you mm-hmm. update you update your your OS your operate several times really, and you completely ignore that problem every single time. Yeah, zero prompted me to find this option. I couldn't find it. You had to give me specific step by step instructions to find out where this thing was so I could turn it off. Hmm. <clears throat> like you have to go into your control panel. You have to choose to view everything by icons because the options to show you does not lead to what you want to get to. You have to go to power options and then you have to click on a button that says show things which are currently unavailable. And that Wow, that doesn't make any sense at all. No. Oh. It's it's complicated and it's invisible and you go through a crap ton of stuff and they auto check that thing so it's automatically checked like you know quote unquote recommended. What the heck? Mm-hmm. I mean I know yeah. I didn't have a virus. I know I didn't have a virus. I searched my computer for viruses twenty four seven. So them saying oh it's just viruses, bah. Stupid. I'm just uh, losing everything on your computer really sucks. Yeah, been there. So, yeah, you know all my Skyrim mods are gone. Been so, there too. Yeah, um, a whole crap ton of stuff is just gone from my computer that I won't be able to get back. Um. I was able to get the RPG Maker back, but, you know, I can't mm-hmm. do anything with it now, except did start you, again. Did you buy that through Steam, or, I mean... No, I bought it through their actual website, and they gave me a key and a download link in the email, so I just set oh, okay. it up. Yeah. I did the same thing with Pamela recently. Um, I managed to get my anti-virus protection back up, which is good. Um, so I got most of my stuff back that like programs that cost money and stuff. It's just, uh, lost a lot of stuff. Mm. Like I was working on original story for a while and I lost everything for that. Uh, so yeah, I did too when my hard drive crashed. So I feel your pain. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, you know, it took me like two, three days to fix that, which completely stopped any and all writing that I was doing. Um, and now I can start actually writing again. So there's that at least. Are you in the mood to, though? I imagine you can be kind of depressed after that. Yeah, I kind of am. Um, also, let's see. 
going on to what else I did this week. Um, so since my parents were gone, I had to basically be the man of the house since my grandpa does nothing except for drive my brother and I had to make dinner and stuff. So, um, yeah, Aww. I had to drive my little brother to football. That was fun. Uh, you know, cause now he's doing football mm. at my old high school cause it's now his new high school, which is weird. Really weird. You feeling old yet? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Hmm. Um, trying to get at twenty five. I said see how you feel I that. said hi to one of my teachers once, and they didn't recognize me. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you're just so grown up now. Also, you're also, also one of hundreds, hundreds of kids. kids. <laughs> yeah. I was in the IB class. We were the so? special class. <laughs> yeah. The internet box class. No. But, uh, yeah, that's how special you are. You are so special. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so, all my teachers recognize me, though I have very striking white hair and I'm incredibly, incredibly pale and wear sunglasses most of the time. So I'm, I, I, I kind of stand out a bit. So yeah, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. So um, also this week, um, drove my sister to a interview at California Sun, which is a tanning salon. Um, that was fun, considering I never see my sister, uh, at all, ever, my older sister. She's like 22 now. Mm. Um, and then went out and we had Pan Express, which was fun. Uh, cause, like, my sister, um, like a while back, got into some pretty bad drugs, and she's been clean for like, Six months now. And she's good. living in a sort of a shelter place, I guess. A sort of a living area for people like her. Yeah, she dropped out of college, but she's looking to get back in. So it's, it's looking nice over there. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty much my week. I mean, there's not really else much else that I did other than I did some D&D and my friends got together, like, a couple nights ago, and then we all watched Spaceballs, which is fun. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, now that Zero's uh, super depressing corner is over, uh, that burger is awesome, and uh, I think I have the meat sweats a little bit right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not actually kidding. I'm sweating like anything, but that's mostly because it's fucking boiling here. There's taunting? another heat wave going on. Another one? Yeah. yeah. It's uncanny. Britain's actually getting a summer. whoop de fucking do Yeah. I'm so, sorry I was depressing over in my corner. <laughs> He's Eeyore again. Yay. Uh, oh. I, I don't know why Eeyore's that's a yay though. moment, but okay. Uh, Eel Zero is awesome. It's great. Um, we'll go with Slice it next. Go for it. Um, I played a number of video games this week. I was going to dedicate it to games that I wanted to play but never got around to because I didn't want to pay money for them. Um, the Walking Dead Survival Instinct is just as bad as everyone says it is. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. Terrible, terrible I've heard game. That, I've heard that the best way to go through that game is just run into a mob of zombies and be passed around. Uh, yeah, it is, actually. You enter this kind of grapple mini-game, and you yeah. can get through an entire crowd without taking any damage if you're good at it. Yeah, it's, That's... uh... I didn't play that one very long. It's a few hours at most, and that was torturous. The other one I thought was going to be even worse, though, Dead Island Riptide, was a fun game. I wanted to hate it, but I just really <clears throat> couldn't. I couldn't. It's It's like Borderlands fun, but... I mean, it's not a well-made game, granted, but it has a lot of problems the first one had as well. Because, I mean, they didn't. it's just the first one. It's like an expansion, mostly. First game was great until you had to use guns. See, you say that, but you, you never have to. I'm sure it's easier to, you know, use them when you're fighting other humans, but you don't have to. Mm. I got the impression when you run up against... It's like after you get past the first area, when you get into the actual town itself, mm-hmm. 
and you you immediately come up against this fucking huge armored thing that's supposed to be some sort of zombie. Oh, the ram pretty, thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's the point where you start to have to use guns. Uh, and just, considering I constantly build my characters to be melee spec because the melee combat in that game is so fun. Because it has this neat mechanic where you can set the melee combat to be analog so you can direct where your strikes go. So you can specifically target zombies' limbs and chop them off and stuff like that. It's really cool. But two problems with it. One, it's default to off, so that usually you just get the regular crappy melee combat, so you just swing and swing and swing and swing, and that's the most impact you get. And two, like I said, they start asking, well, more or less requiring you to use guns on certain enemies, and then you're kind of stuck if you've been specking yourself for melee combat for most of the game. Yeah. Yeah. My only other problem was, um, well, no, there's two. The, the game still thinks their definition of difficult is to throw a thousand infected at you. The fastest moving enemies that are just, they bullshit hate you. Stupid. And I was forced to play Sam B, my, uh, my most hated character. It's, it's, he's arrogant. And the problem is, I'm good at video games, so it's justified arrogance. <laughs> and I, that's the worst kind. <laughs> Yeah, so that was, okay. eh, it's okay. I enjoyed it while it lasted. I think I might run through the game with the, the gun-using girl next time, see how different it is. Probably not very, but oh well. I also played Saints Row 4, and holy God, did that ruin me for Saints Row 3. Just, I, thought <laughs> that they, I thought the powers were going to be overpowered and ruin the game, and to an extent they kind of did. It takes a lot of the tension away from most of the battles, but... um just the mobility, the sheer mobility. I can get across the map in like three minutes. It's great. I, it's effectively I a superhero game. Driving with a car. It is. It's effectively a superhero game. You, you're supposed to feel incredibly powerful, and mm -hmm. well, it makes sense that the enemies feel kind of weak source in comparison to you. Yeah, pretty much. I think. Uh, also, I was clearly surprised. Fucking yeah. Yeah. It's more of a Sonic game than Sonic is, and that's that's weird. It's just the movement oh, yeah. feels so comfortable, I guess. It's mm. not clunky or anything. Well, most of the time. I mean, sometimes it kind of freaks out, but yeah. And uh, I got a working console again. I got finally my PS2 arrived, and it works, shockingly enough. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've been playing old stuff. I started with Final Fantasy XII, because... I don't remember ever re replaying that one. And that's that's pretty much it. I've been playing games all week. Sweet. <clears throat> Ken? Okay. Let me first start out by saying this week was not as bad as I thought it would be, even with all the damn working I've been doing. It could be worse. Yeah, because the thing is, the re nobody was there this week all week, pretty much, because everyone, for some reason, decided to take this week as the week to take their vacation. Mm. It being summer and all, yeah. Yeah. I, I kept asking all week, why this week in particular for everybody? Is something happening this week somewhere where they're all going together? But either way, I end up having to work evenings for, like, between 8 and 10 hours every day this week. And today's my last day on that stretch, so I'm excited about that. Um... It was actually pretty fun because nobody was there. We could dick around a lot. That's always fun. Yeah. So in the time we were just in the time it took like fill the shows up with what we were gonna do and everything, uh, it was just a lot of bullshitting and playing around and stuff. And also, yesterday there was like a chili cook-off festival downtown, and being news team. We cover that kind of thing. Mm. And since Ooh. we are on TV, we get free shit from things like nice. this. Nice. So we got like a gigantic fucking pot of chili. Sweet. And that's all I ate yesterday. And it was awesome. And there's still more. Until, until this morning. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm hungry right now. But when I go into work, there's going to be a gigantic pot of chili in the refrigerator. And I want it. <laughs> like there's so, there's gallons of it. It's ridiculous. 
<laughs> but other than that, I had a birthday this week. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. I'm 23 now, and I feel sad. Why? Because I'm I'm at the age where the people on TV are younger than me, and it makes me oh. feel like I need it makes me feel bad. I'm not famous and rich yet. I hate how everyone on this podcast is younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking assholes! I'm sorry. sorry. I didn't mean to be born this way. I'm not. Way. You are. Told you. No, he's not sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so yeah, on, no. my birth- <laughs> yeah, on my birthday, I decided to treat myself with buying the UFC, EA Sports UFC game. How is it? Sweet. Uh, no. I assume bad. Yeah, it's kind of not good. Oh. Like, I don't know how to explain. After the initial new game feeling wears off... The mechanics of the game kind of wear on you. Like, the ground fighting is almost unworkable. The way they did it. I don't see why they had to change it from the way T. I miss THQ. The way THQ did it was so much easier. They could have they could have kept the mechanics. I mean, they could have changed the mechanics the way they did to this game and kept E and kept THQ's control scheme because that worked better. EA it's, Sports. Okay. I don't know. Like, well, EA had uh, an MMA fighting game before yeah. they got the UFC license, mm-hmm. so I imagine they just kept all that stuff. They didn't. They kind of, like, the way things worked, I think, in the last one they made, were when you were on the ground fighting with someone, you transitioned to a different position by, like, hitting two of the face buttons, I think. I didn't play it, so I don't know. But they, the way they did it, they sort of kept THQ's way, which is moving the right analog stick, quarter circle, either to the left and up or to the right and up. But the way they did it, they like it's so funky, you can barely tell. And they also did the same thing with submissions, too. So you, it's the same motion for a submission or transition or whatever. And you can't tell if they're going for a submission or they're trying to pass to a more dominant position. So you can't ever you – you don't know what you're countering most of the time. And they also made it so that you could stand up off of the ground in any position. Like if you were on your back and someone was in full mount on top of you, the most dominant position there is, you could just stand up out of it, huh. which is stupid. Which leads to some bullshit matches online. Because it's either you don't ever I fight on the ground. so, yeah. yeah. It's either you don't ever fight on the ground at all, or it's not worth fighting on the ground, because everyone's just going to stand up immediately. You can't do any real... Di- you, it's almost impossible to finish someone on the ground if you start from there with strikes. You have to be good at submissions to do it. And they... There's not a whole lot of variance to the moves. I don't want some arcade... I'm not... I wouldn't expect some kind of arcade stuff. But I was very disappointed. I think the THQ games were way better... The the THQ UFC games were way better than EA. And that's sad to me. Eh, But I'm good at it. (laughs) Well, that's something, I guess. Is it is it okay that you can be good at something and complain about it at the same time? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm doing that. I win all the time. I'm just not as stoked or as arrogant about it as I was when I won in the THQ UFC games. Yeah, it's called I Want a Challenge. I mean, I'm... And uh, a lot of gamers are feeling that way right now, so, you know. And like I said about Dead Island, I mean, I'm good at it. It's just not very well my game, so. They could have done so much better with it. And most of the characters fight the same. It's the same. In the computer, in the, in the, the AI in that game sucks. Ooh. It really does. They fight the exact same. Every character fights the exact same. 
if you're going up against them, which makes no sense. <clears throat> and I'll let him done ranting about the UFC game. My family and me were all watching, uh, my family and I were all watching so like UFC the other night, and we got to see this Asian chick get her face punched in. Yeah, that was Oh, nice. man. Yeah, she was covered in blood. Just, it was ridiculous. And what was their reaction to that? Because I'm assuming you don't ever watch that. <laughs> My mom was just, like, looking away in horror, and I was like, wow, this is literally a bloodbath. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. And then we were watching the other one with Firmino, which was cool. I don't know why we were watching it, but we were just were like, oh, why not? Needless to say, my mom no longer wants to watch UFC. But she probably still will. Probably. Why? I don't know. Because it's fascinating. Uh, oh. well, anyway, I'm slightly out of being Eeyore right now, so... Mm. <clears throat> Ken? Hello? Huh? Is that everything? Yeah, pretty much. My brother went off to Georgia to do his army thing. And other than that, that's pretty much it. Okay. So, um, the Steam sale started a couple of days ago. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Yep. Mm-hmm. You remember, uh, around the winter Steam sale, and we did an episode, apologies, I just ate this really delicious burger, and it's kind of repeating on me a little bit. <clears throat> Great. Sorry it's about karma that. karma for the bragging. Mm. Yeah, a little bit. It's difficult to eat and talk at the same time. It sounds horrendous, I imagine. So, apologies, audience. No apologies for you guys, because you guys suck. But, um... Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. So, I have been buying stuff again. Because of the Steam sale. Mm Mm-hmm. So, my list... Hold on. Currently... Um, I'll be right back. Slicer wisely decided that right now is a good time to go get a drink. Uh, <laughs> Borderlands 2 Game of the Year Edition with the Ultimate Vault Hunter Pack 2 DLC. Dead Rising 3. Mm. Dynasty Warriors 8. Game Dev Tycoon. Plague Inc. Speedrunners. Four copies, because I am awesome to all the yeah. people on this podcast. You are. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm back. Oh, by the way, by the way, Battle Block Theater is only like $3.74 right now. It's a daily deal. So that, mm. that might be an option for a future LP. Could be. It's a good show. Um, Talk about it later. <laughs> yeah, still going. Prison Architect, which was a poor choice because it doesn't run on my computer, it turns out. Uplink. How much was that, anyway? It was like $6? Yeah, like, uh, I think so. Something like 6 quid. Uh, Uplink. Dragon Age Origins Complete Edition. DuckTales. And because Zero just mentioned it on the chat, uh, Fable the Lost Chapters will be bought in a couple seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, probably Sleeping Dogs as well. Mm. So... Yeah. Also, I would like to point out that I have voted in every single round of the Community Choice Specials. Not a single time has my choice won. <laughs> wow. That's ten rounds, and it has, I have lost every single time. <laughs> hey, look, my uh, team on the on the Summer Adventure thing is almost winning. Second place. Yeah. You're never going to win anything out of that unless you're actually making points. So... Uh oh, uh, 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 oh, it's going up. Oh, it's like watching. Oh, you're on blue team too. Yeah. Yeah. Blue team rules. Wait, what? Go blue team. Yeah. I'm confused, but whatever. Me and Casey are both on the blue team, trying to survive in this world of. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Pirate Wolf came back, and and Red came with a vengeance. Yeah, it's a special event thing for the summer sale. Basically, everyone that participates is put in a team, and if you make badges by getting all the trading cards, then you gain points for your team and can win free games from your wish list. Which is cool, 
but that means not selling your trading cards, which are surprisingly worth quite a bit of money. <laughs> so I would imagine so if you get a chance to win free games with them. Hmm. My my uh, strategy in this is to just go on a team and then hope that they're the one in five that wins and get free you games. You don't get anything if you don't contribute, so... I know. Maybe. Yeah. I can't make a bad girl's trading cards. I can't do that. Because you get, like, one for every three votes, but that's only if you're level eight. And yeah, I'm only level six. So I don't get anything either. Yeah. But I want the games that are on the lists, and I never do <laughs> win. So you know, mm. it's unfortunate. Yeah. Don't you get anyway. like hundred XP for those badges for just making them? <clears throat> yeah, but that means you have to make them by getting all the cards. Right. Which are like ten bucks per card. Yeah. Wow. Well, no. It's a one card like... or ten dollars USD or equivalent. Oh, yeah, to buy them, to get them with purchases, yes. But if you just buy them on the market, they're like 20p each. Uh. Uh, yeah, so the Steam sale's happening. I'm buying stuff for really ridiculously cheap prices, which is nice. It's a nice change of pace. Um, so I watched um, No Game, No Life again this week. Yeah. I got, I got a question. Does, uh, does Dead or Alive have uh, dating sims? Anything like that? No game, no life. Uh, like, I think there's a maybe. game, no life. Yeah, because uh, Living or Dead really feels like it could yeah. be a parody, just a little bit. Yeah, oh, it's, it, it's, it's the, Gal Gun. Yeah, they, it's, they say I, it in the anime. It's, Gal it's Gun. Living or Dead. No, that's that's not a Dead or Alive thing. That's a different game. Okay. And I am a little bit ashamed to say that I knew instantly what Gal Gun was as soon as they mentioned it. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you, Giant Bomb, for that. That was <laughs> that was a good special, and it was really hilariously yeah. creepy, but still. <laughs> and then Living or Dead, I'm pretty sure they were referencing Dead or Alive and that whole... I, I think there was a whole thing you could do with the whole beach game they did. The, that thing where there was some sort of dating oh, mechanic. Oh, yeah, extreme volleyball yeah. with the weird alien breasts that move independently of everything. Yeah. It's <laughs> weird. Yeah. <laughs> Pushing them Xbox graphics as far as it can go. Yeah, I guess. That's one way of putting it. Uh, yeah, so that was a thing. And uh, I just want to point out that fake that Slicer recommended a few weeks ago, Biting the Hand That Feeds, that has pretty much just become the uninvited guests for the HP fandom. I think it's a little rushed for that, but it's it's. Uh, on to that put level. this in perspective, the Wizarding Wizarding Britain now runs on a potato-based economy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because of Draco. Yeah, uh, yeah. Who is shockingly likable in that fic? Seriously, yeah. I actually like him. He's still very much a villain, but he's likable. It's strange. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Anyway. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I've done this week. I played games. I Oh, and I watched a hell of a lot of spoiler warning for no adequately explained reason. I still can't watch that show. I, he recommended yeah. the Mass Effect 2 one. I, I still cannot stand their voices. Mm. He, has, he actually talked about it for a while. He had quality of their mic stuff is just not very good. I don't know why. Yeah, it's very strange. They have really high production values when it comes to like the editing. They have this fancily done intro for every season and uh, title graphics and such things. And they have their own original music done by Kevin McLeod of uh, Incompetech, I think it is. Um, but after all that, they have like, they constantly use push to talk so they're Anything they say gets cut off at strange intervals, and their microphones aren't particularly good. Is that good. why they Mumble kept getting cut off at the end? Sorry? Is that why Mumble kept getting cut off at the end? Yeah, they use push to talk, and they they record using Ventrilo rather than like Skype or anything. So, uh. Uh. yeah, so that's a shame. But I don't really feel like I am 
properly experienced to advise them to you know step their game up a little bit when we actually sound a little bit better than they do when it comes to audio quality, <laughs> surprisingly enough. Even with the constant Lightly. fuck-ups that I make, yeah, we're a little bit better than they are in that. Anyway. And my mic so is real professional. Yeah. Slightly better is still better. Yes, yes it is. Even when I'm eating on the mic. Nom nom nom. Mm. Most good, by the way. Mm. Can, burger and curly fries, good food. Uh, what have we got else to talk about? Oh yeah, we got the fucking manga stuff to talk about. So, uh, Bleach. Bleach is next. We're doing Bleach. Uh, I don't remember much of Bleach. Okay. Uh, Ichigo is outnumbered, and so he can't easily pawn everything. That, that's about it, really. Also, his clothes are super... Also, his, <laughs> his clothes are apparently some superpowered thing where when he jumped down from wherever the Central Division is, it's opened a hole there for 6,000 seconds so that What's-His-Face can get up there and kill the Spirit King. Yeah, so... Ooh, to put this in another in another set of terms, Ichigo's final character redesign was so badass that it broke the world. <laughs> <laughs> that cloth you're wearing is Again. called King's Key. It's made with the bones and hair of the Zero... Di- what? No, why is your clothes That's made really of bones and hair of the Zero Division? Scared. And they show the guy with the beard, and you're like, he's wearing beard hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's the picture they choose to show. Yeah. Congratulations, you are wearing someone's beard, and it broke reality. <laughs> it also protects you from friction. <laughs> and it's surprising. So, durable. wait, does, does that mean that it's lubricated? Yes. Ew. <laughs> Greasy he is, beard hair, Lou. He's wearing... Oh. <laughs> his clothes he's wearing are made of reality-shattering, lubricated beard hair. <laughs> yep. We have turned this into the worst thing ever. <laughs> A little bit. Uh, I mean, how how do you think that feels? <laughs> Like, he's like, the, the guy is like, there's no, there's no better clothes for Shinigami. Well, I'd say it's scratchy, but apparently it's free. Apparently it's comfortable. Yeah. Fruit, so. it's, yeah. Free, it's comfortable, apparently, because he's been chill for like the last seven chapters, so. Yeah. Maybe it's just. Apparently it feels really good. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, man. <laughs> really. Out of all. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to find some way to make Ichigo responsible for him being able to go over and invade the palace of the Spirit King. All right, so what we're going to do, let's make his clothes super lubricated. What? Like, lubricated enough to shatter through the 72 barriers between Zero Division and Serate. Reality, shat- reality shattering lubrication. That's what we need. I'm going to invent a brand of lubricant called Reality Shattering <laughs> And it will sell. Slide through anything. I probably would sell, actually, starvingly enough. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so, uh... But bones and hair. Bones and hair. Not just hair, but bones. So, Any way usually moves means we're moving well, on. I just, I just want, I just want to ask this one question: Did somebody offer up their rib cage or something? Like, uh, it doesn't make sense. I imagine right, the, I'm like done. dead zero division members. Maybe. Are there any dead members? They're supposed to be super awesome. Actually, yeah, they kind of established that. They've been around since the very beginning, the ones that are still alive. So, maybe, I don't know. Well, yeah. people, get, people come back from getting cut in half all the time and bleach, so maybe they just pulled something out and healed it. Yeah. Yeah, healed your knows. non-existing rib cage also, or something. Also, also, on the note of outfits, um, Renchi has a furry hat. It, look, I don't, it doesn't even look like he's like it's his hair with like a bandana. It just looks like he's wearing a furry hat. 
which is weird. Yeah. And then Byakuya looks like he's wearing, <laughs> like, a head wrap, which is okay. Yeah, so we get the, hey, all the flunky characters that are now pretty much the flunky characters are here, so they can store all the enemy mooks so that the great hero can go beat the boss guy and finish the fight and win and woo! What this means in simple terms is we are finally at the end game. This is it. What is coming now will be the big finish. Ichigo's losing cake post will slide right through the finish. Maybe. I am really hoping that's what this is. It really feels like it. It feels just like all of those other series that have that very exact same trope. Okay, here's my prediction. Here's my prediction. Final battle. Wait, no, we're going to go move this to the Palace of the Spirit King. Because why not? Then the actual final battle. Then he absorbs the power of the Spirit King, and then final form. Something like that. Some BS. Oh, it's gonna God, be, they're going to have somehow get it. there. To translate, this is going to be another Aizen thing. Yeah, it's pretty much going to be another Aizen thing. Is what Maybe I'm he becomes the Spirit King. Yeah. After what and then he has, kills the Spirit King. <laughs> yeah, and then he has to kill this, him, yeah. I mean, that, that's how you make your villain super, super, super OP when he's already OP. Because, oh, our hero became OP, even though he really hasn't done anything to establish that he's OP other than beat up some mooks. You know. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, so, yeah, we're either at the, the end game or we're very gradually getting closer to it. So, yay. It's sort of taking a while. Uh. Mm hmm. Yeah. Also, why did they give him those clothes if they were going to just open it straight way to the, you know, Palace of the Spirit King? Just a quick question. What do you mean? Like, okay, it can break. You can get to Serate really fast if you wear these clothes. Okay, and it also opens a way straight to the palace. Yeah. There you go. I think they were I mean, hoping it would be powerful enough to stop them before they could try. Mm. That or they just didn't care. That or they couldn't afford for the entirety of Serate to be destroyed by the Quincy's. I mean, it's not like it would take forever to just oh, go right. the long they... way. But whatever. He arrived in time for his big moment, so it doesn't matter. Form. Sorry? They were destroyed. Do you think the Shinigami would reform if they were destroyed eventually? Yeah, I think they actually probably end up would reforming because they kind of need to exist. I think the way it works is you can die in the human world as a human and you will either be purified and go to soul society or you will become a hollow. And then when you die there, you come back as a human again. You come back as a human again, yeah, and yeah. no memory of anything. that ha You're basically yeah. reincarnated. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm saying, like, you know, they'd be able to rebuild their whole... Well, they would, yeah, yeah. because the fucking head captain only built the place, like, 2,000 years ago or something. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I meant. I didn't mean come back to life, like reincarnation. I meant, yeah. like, if the Quincy's wiped all of them out, how long would it take for more Shinigami to be born? And well, how long would it take someone... them to get a government in order? The soul would have to wind up super strong enough to start thinking that through first. Mm. Also, the world would kind of break if you destroyed all the Shinigamis for a little while, because then no, everybody would just become straight hollow. If if all the Soul Reapers were killed, then the Quincy's would have won, and then they immediately would go and try and wipe out all the hollows, I imagine. Yeah, souls and then... Don't become, souls don't automatically become... Like, don't automatically undergo the hollow process when they die. Souls only yeah, become hollows if they have something to stay attached to in the world mm. when they die. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but there would be just a crap ton of hollows, and then the Quincy's yeah, go, and when yeah, the Quincy be... destroys a hollow, the hollow soul gets destroyed, and they'll get purified, and it would just be really bad. Yeah, it would be the beginning of the unraveling of war existence. It yeah, wouldn't so straight just... lead to it. With... Yeah, <laughs> I, I Because yeah. even though there's that whole reincarnation I think they might thing, have been making that up, just to, you know, put higher stakes on it. 
the Shinigami, I mean, where it unravels the universe like that. I think they just didn't want people to permanently die, or souls to permanently die. Mm. I'm trying to use the logic given to me by Bleach Cannon here, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to work within the rules of the universe that I, that I, that yeah. I know of. <laughs> All right. I know that not a lot of this makes sense and there's plot holes everywhere, but I have to work within the rules of the universe really? given to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, in summary, lubricated beard hair destroys the world. There we go. And we're moving on. Naruto. Wow. I don't understand what's happening anymore. <laughs> they're pulling a fucking Aizen is what they're doing. Okay. Wait, that was point last chapter, wasn't it? Or... I just want to ask something real quick. I actually have two questions. One, can Naruto still not use Shunshin? No. He can't. Cause... Seriously, he does not have that ability. Because <laughs> I was given the impression that that's, while not a basic technique, it's pretty standard. As in, you know, everyone in the series can use it? Most people have it that it's taught when they turn tuning, so since he never yeah. ranked up, he doesn't have it. But surely, Jiraiya, you know, three years, you'd think someone... No? We've no. seen as much. <laughs> he didn't teach him anything. Oh, okay. So, yeah. That's kind of sad, but never mind. Uh, also, why do they have horns? The I pointed that out. Their mother has horns. Of course, their children are going to have them. Yeah. Okay. Are they functional so... horns? <laughs> are they just fleshy horn bits that come out of your forehead? Is there bone in there? <laughs> do they do no anything? Problem. I think there's like, Why does she have horns then? I don't know. Because she's not human. Apparently, yeah, apparently she's not human at all. But she's like a naiad, I guess. Of the I tree. Thought, oh. Also, sure, I just checked whatever. the week. Naruto does not know how it's to shinjo. It's a fucking Japanese series that is heavily rooted in their mythology, so of course it's going to go into mythological, mystical bullshit and not make any sense at the end game because all series that are like that do. Code Geish did that. Fucking Air Gear somehow managed to do that. Uh, wow, Air really? Gear. Pretty sure. I just know it was completely nonsensical by the end. Oh, yeah, it totally was. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah. I'll just fucking... Remember, remember in Air Gear when Obama went into the body of a young oh, Japanese schoolgirl. <laughs> We've talked about this. That enough. was the series that came from. Yeah. <laughs> and and, wow. and and Obama was super hyped about it. Yeah, we've talked about this before, so we're not going to talk about it again. <laughs> Zero, stop trying. Uh, okay. Ken, do you wanna? This is your thing. Okay. So. Um, so from what I've gathered and understand, apparently Black Zetsu is also this woman's son. And Black Zetsu has apparently been the evil little thing in the back of everyone's mind, making all the bad stuff happen for years so he can get this plan in order to revive right. his mother. Oh, yeah. Okay, so has now I've seen the Puss in Boots movie. Yes. No. No. Well, most of the way through the series, they have this flashback thing where it shows the, the evil brother is in the background cackling maniacally in every scene that happens in Puss's <laughs> life. And he's just... He, some of the scenes are ones that were in the movie. He's just... He's like <laughs> under a box or something. And that's all I'm imagining here. <laughs> it's just black Zetsu <laughs> under a box or behind a wall or Apparently, that sounds pretty accurate it's actually. pretty accurate because in this one scene they have like the entire they did the thing where they showed earlier how Madara and 
how strong we were fighting. Apparently, this dude was just chilling on the cliff watching the shit the whole time. Just crouched down like, it oh, yeah, this is working. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so I, I just want to point this out as well. To date, Naruto and Sasuke are Generation Xerox of Kaguya's kids, the Sage's kids, Madara and Hashirama, Jiraiya and Or- Orochimaru, and Kakashi and Obito. Mm. So far. There's more reincarnation in Naruto than there is in Bleach. Yeah. There's something wrong with that it, that sentence. I am... I, I, you remember when times were much younger and mangas were much simpler? When the only thing we had to think about for Naruto was, oh, look, he's a failure, isn't he? But he might get to be a cool guy someday. And then with... Bleach, we only thought, well, look, it's Ichigo. He's going to go beat the crap out of Aizen someday. Maybe not everyone today, knows, but everyone knows, to get to it. everyone knows the dangerous thing in the Naruto series was apparently Orochimaru getting Sasuke's eyes and taking his uh, body. Yeah. yeah. You remember when manga characters were new and interesting and weren't just doubles of doubles of doubles of doubles of doubles of doubles of doubles? You know, it's... Now that you mention that, I'm actually kind of seeing where the the copies are falling apart. If you copy one image over and over again, it starts to degrade or whatever. Mm. I mean, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm still liking that One Piece though, because Luffy is a, is a you very and your one piece. chaotic character, and I like it. I mean, Luffy may be this sort of dumb character that eats a lot, but at the same time, he's chaotic. He's not like, you know super, super good hero all the time. He's just like, I do what I want. Just nice. He's a pirate, yeah. though, so I suppose he has that going for him. Yeah. Kind of has to be at least that. At the very least, he has to be that if he's going to call himself a pirate. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know. They, he doesn't do much else that's piratey. So. There was, there was much, there, they could have gone many different ways to make him not as unique as a protagonist. Yeah. It's mainly because of that that I find him so unique as opposed to other characters. Is that he's he reflects the piratey type thing in that very slightly. Yes. Yeah. From what I've seen the entire Straw Hat crew is pretty good actually. Well yeah. written. They're all they're all pretty established and it's it's nice. Yeah. So Yeah. Once again, Naruto may not have lubricated beard hair, but... You are not letting this go. <laughs> he can fly. It's I lubricated. Guess. You should be able to let it go pretty easy, but... You can... Did you just make oh. a pun about a pun? Really? Mm. Ugh. <laughs> or at least I can take solace with the fact that I am... At least I can take solace with the fact that I am never going to use any of the things in either of those two manga we just talked about. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, None of it. Apparently it didn't happen. Yeah, that... <laughs> that fact means more and more every chapter. Mm. On the bright side of manga, uh, RE Monster updated again. Oh, yeah, yeah, Yay. I was going to talk about that. Which one's that one? That's the one where the guy, uh, he's basically an esper with the power to eat anything and gain its abilities, and he gets and he dies and gets reincarnated as a goblin, but he keeps his ability. He gets school dayed hard, dazed. Yeah, hard. he, he gets does. Stabbed a lot. Yandere Soccer kills him. It was basically, yeah, the person, cause, you know, although it was a soccer, he kind of treated her like a little sister, which was a bad idea. <laughs> and in, you know, a little bit. Send yeah. me that link. <laughs> <laughs> if she um, can't have the D, she cuts it off. That's that's how it works. <laughs> that should be the first. Uh, that should be the first line on the Yandere page <laughs> in TV tropes. <laughs> um. So it updated. Um. And he ranked up to Hobgoblin. Now, so he looks yep. more human. Um. 
Also, he's training the goblins. And, and he's got a nice little minion army. It's great. Yeah. Uh, have you been reading the light novel, uh, Slicer? Uh, no. No, I'm just sticking with the manga. I can't read light novels yeah. for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, Zero, you're pretty much the only person that reads light novels on this podcast. So it gets really, really freaking good. Like, oh my gosh, she's getting so overpowered. Okay. Zero's going to talk about this for a while, so I'm just going to go to drink because fucking dehydration. Bad thing. I'd prefer you not talk about it, actually, because uh, it's spoilers. And uh, he's, he's always going to be overpowered. That's the point of his ability. Yeah, it's, it's super overpowered. Like, for example, um, you know, the stronger the boss, he, he basically... Like, he can, he can swallow magical items and gain their powers. Yeah. Like, he encounters... This is kind of a little bit of a spoiler, but he does encounter some sort of, you know, some PCs, some, you know, adventurers, heroes, characters, right? Mm-hmm. And he basically... I wonder when they show up. Yeah, and he gets an item box. You know, where you can hold, like... It's got like something like twenty two hundred fifty slots, and you can carry ninety nine stacks of each item. Oh wow! He gets wow. that. He gets the standard RPG item box, and he swallows it. He gets requip magic effectively. Effectively. Wow. Cool. Like, oh my gosh. He's in an RPG, and he can. Be, and also, if he eats adventurers, he gets their job. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So he got yeah. He learns how to speak human pretty easily. Also gets the adventure. Yeah, for everything g- they fought, it wouldn't be hard to find a human to kill and eat. I mean, yeah. He gets the uh, he gets job like mage class. He gets all the classes. It's great. He's not restricted by any of that. Like you have to choose one because he can just get all of them. Um, also, magic is super OP in this. So he doesn't use it yeah, because it's yeah, too that. OP for him. Because basically he gets an instant kill magic. Pretty much. From what I've seen, I haven't seen it not instantly kill people yet. Ah. I, that was foreshadowed pretty hard in the latest manga chapter, though. Yeah. So I can see that. Yeah, it's not really a spoiler, but... Also, in the actual light novel, there's no um, dialogue, really. Huh. And I'm back. It's, it's all written. It's just first, internal musing or something, or it's all just written from first person, sort of journalist, journalesque type stuff. There's a little bit of oh, I said this and, or something along these lines. But I like reading the manga oh, a lot more because okay. you can see like their connections a lot more because there's actual dialogue. So what did I miss? What did Zero talk about for Link Dump? Uh, Ari Monster, just a light novel and stuff that's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, Without okay. spoiling too much, anyway. Yeah. Also, he he ate a he ate a fire spirit stone and gained the power to control fire. Awesome. Op. Eat magic. Sort of. That's spells. low level fire magic, though. That's like yeah. cooking stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. But you know, he get the the more he eats something, the stronger that ability, the more abilities from it he can get, the stronger he can get. You know. Too. So, yeah, it's a really interesting concept. I uh, look forward to seeing it develop. Next chapter comes out June 27th. Or July 27th, sorry. Next okay. month? Yeah, it's a monthly manga. Oh, that sucks. Mm. So, uh, next topic. Now that I have a drink, and I'm not going to be <clears throat> constantly stumbling over my words for how incredibly thirsty and dry my throat is. What you get? Uh, it soothes. Yeah, I have to yeah. drink. It's not food. You're not really taunting you. I'm not trying to. It really is soothing because it's fucking hot. Um, <clears throat> right, so next topic is uh, best game cutscene. So, this is basically the backhanded compliment topic. <laughs> In because a way. I don't see cutscenes as a good thing in games. Games are pretty much designed to be an interactive medium. The player shapes the story. So the idea of a cutscene, which is basically sit there, do nothing, and watch us tell your story, is 
kind of anathema to the idea of games, where the players kind of play a part. Yeah. So this is a topic for the best example of that terrible, terrible concept. Thus, so, the backhand compliment topic. Well, I so think the like thing with cut best cutscenes or the worst cutscenes. Best cutscenes. Okay. Well, I, I I think the thing with cutscenes, you know, is that your character can't be everywhere, and there are some parts where you can't have your hand in it. You know, like some some events are like you can't interact with that because it happens and there's nothing you can do about it. And even if you were to react, you'd just be doing the same thing the character's doing anyway. Or just or That's, sometimes, yeah. Or sometimes speaking it's just of that. Up, uh, Oh, you, can, you can go. I'll go next. Right, well, uh, I just want to say sometimes it's just straight up dialogue, and it's like, what do you want to do? You just want to mash a button, you know? Uh, Does that count? Is that interactive? Like sometimes it's it's you you, well, like I don't know. It's not really interactive if you're just mashing the a button. I mean, if you're given the option to like pick different things to say, that's one thing, but. If you're given the option to do something different, if you're given choices, then yes, that's interactive. Otherwise, no. All right. All right. Uh, Sicer, you're saying? The uh, the final mix, especially, of Kingdom Hearts games include a lot of cutscenes that were cut, <laughs> I guess, from the original game. And it's mostly exposition on the villain side of things. So, like... You know, information that's important, but you couldn't possibly know from the main character's perspective. So those are... I like those that's, ones. Yeah, that's a good use, because it's things that you wouldn't be able to interact with anyway, because it's all about non-player characters. So It gives motivation, mostly. <clears throat> yeah. I can like, uh, with without that, it, that's... Riku is a, just a prick. A downright asshole. And, I mean, he still is, but at least he has a reason for it. Mm. Also, cutscenes make for really good uh, boss entrances. True. Mm. Borderlands mm. does that pretty well. Uh, both of them, actually. Mm. Yeah. Dark Souls does some pretty good boss entrances with cutscenes. Also true. Yeah, but I'll be honest, I kind of like the ones where you don't get a boss intro for it. Where, for example, the very first boss of the first game, the uh, Asylum Demon, mm-hmm. mm, and yeah. you go through the fog door, and you look down from the ledge, and you see the boss down there, and your first thought is to think, okay, I'm safe up here, so I'm going to just check out the room and plan my attack, and then the boss jumps, <laughs> 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 and you shit yourself. <laughs> I have no idea. I didn't do that. I instantly plunge attack. I, yeah, same here. I don't know. I, I Maybe it's how I outside. play, but... I read something out the door that said, plunge attack. I was like, okay, plunge attack. Oh, that worked. Yeah, it's just general video game logic. You expect to just be safe because they don't generally design for the boss to be able to just get up to you when you're in a safe spot. Mm. No. Mm-hmm. Not usually, but this is Dark Souls, so fuck you. <laughs> I kind of... There's one problem I have with cutscenes, and that's that you can do things in cutscenes that you can't do in the game. Yeah, which leads me to my first recommendation here. I was going to pick one cutscene from this game, but I can't, because it's basically... Yeah, beat this level to unlock more cutscenes. Metal Gear Solid 4. Uh, I was actually going to mention... Uh, Metal Gear Solid Rise or Metal, you know, Metal Gear Solid Rising Revengeance. When that your character, oh, your ahead. character has some really awesome moments, and they're kind of cutscene-ish in that your it's your interactivity is too. limited to you just pushing them, like mashing a lot of the time. That still it, counts, it, apparently. Yeah, so. I don't know. There's one. There's one moment though in particular that really bugs me. And that's, uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of that girl. You know that, that girl, chick? Mistral. Cy- Mistral, yeah. You know Mistral's fight when you're just uh, fighting and all of a sudden you jump hundreds of feet across the map to a pipe? 
that bugs me. Because all of a sudden, you can make that distance out of nowhere. I don't know. Does it take control away from you, or yeah, it takes yeah. control you away press from a you. button to do that. It's a, you beat you to like the after the. It's like it's like three segments of the fight. After the first segment, he kicks her off the platform and like jumps like a hundred feet to a pipe that she landed on, and then that's the second part of the fight. Yeah, mm. yeah. You're not even mentioning the part where he rips off Metal Gear Ray's arm and cuts yeah, it. Yeah, with it. yeah. That's 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 another thing. That that's that that comes later on in the game, but. Gosh darn it. I think we slipped into cutscene play dissidents. Or yeah, but that's that, that's kind of interactive though. The other one where he's just jumping, that's just that's non interactive. It takes control away from you just so you can jump. And it kind of bothers me. Because I don't know, when you just cutscenes are a way for your character to not do to do things he can do but won't do in the game. Which upsets me at, at certain points. Because it's like why can't my character do that? I mean, that would be useful. Yeah. That would solve so many problems. It really would most of the time, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can jump that high. Oh, look, there's a building. You could jump on top of that building and go over it rather than run in and fight all the guys. Oh, yeah, my think... God. My character just climbed over a fence. Yeah. Why can't I do that? <laughs> yeah. So I just hit my mic. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Saints Row does that in reverse. Like in game, you're a total badass, but in the cutscenes, you're you're a wimp. It's a weird. Yeah. That's actually one of the main things I don't like about the series is, um, like, I was defending this point in Saints Row Four, and I was doing fine. I was easily killing everything before they even really got to me because I was defending against planes, and uh, my character would not shut up about being in trouble. Like. But like barely surviving from what the audio was suggesting, and I just, yeah, it was just weird. Mm. It really took me out of the moment. All right, yeah. So here's my choice. Here's my choice. A man chooses. A slave oh, yeah. obeys. Bioshock One. When you meet Andrew Ryan, and it has just been revealed to you that your character's entire existence has been a lie, and he's pretty much just been a puppet being having his pull, strings pulled for the entire game, and that everything you've done is because someone has been giving you orders without you even realizing it. And then yeah. it puts you in a cutscene and takes away any semblance of control that you might have felt you had. So basically, it is pulling back the curtain and showing you how little control you actually had in this game. I never actually yes. looked at it like that, but that's a yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. That that's actually a, I, I kind of like that. I might have to go with that as a cutscene. Um. Though I gotta say, the Bioshock series does have some really good cutscenes in it. Uh, I kind of like the one at the end of Bioshock Infinite. I didn't and, finish that, so you would have to spoil yeah. that. Are we okay with spoiling that game? I mean, it's I years care. old at this point. I'm not gonna play it. I, I, I I'm play more it. so more so not the exact end scene, but the pros the, the sort of cutscene almost it's. Almost cutscene ish from the way it goes. Okay, stop dancing thing. around it and just say what it is because I'm getting okay. confused. And I beat that game. Okay, so at, you know how. So at the end of the game, it's revealed, or near the end, it's revealed that you and the main villain were the same person. Yes. Um, it's just that if you had gone down a different path, you would end up uh, as that person. Because on one on one side of the area, like after the, your character was in a war, and at the end of that, there were two choices: he could either live with his sins or basically go get his sins "quote unquote" cleansed and be baptized and everything. 
the baptism turned him into a super, super religious, crazy, insane person who built a whole town in the sky and made a dictatorship and ruled over people's lives. Yeah. Um, the other option of him uh, living with the sins meant he basically ended up as a private investigator alone with just his baby daughter that he then you know, sold, basically, to get rid of debts and stuff. Yeah. That he sold to really himself. Really crippling debts, it's assumed. Yeah. I, I like that part where it's all of a sudden revealed like that. Because then you can go back in the game, you can see hints for this the entire time. You know, I, I like that Yeah, I that think that's part. the best part of that game, really. Just going back and playing it a second time. Because that game, basically, the entire... There, there's evidence for everything. The beginning quote of the game that plays... I don't remember what it is, but you see it, and you're like, oh. Oh. Bring the girl and wipe away the dead, or something like that. No, no, no. Before that, there's a quote that pe- appears on the screen. I can't remember what it is. Ah. Right before the game I don't begins. Know. So, Hang on. I'm looking it up. Uh, but here it is. The mind of the subject will desperately struggle to create memories where none exist. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how that would be very uh apt for that game. Yeah. Quoted from Barriers to Transdimensional Travel uh Lutis, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, eighteen eighty nine. Yeah. So Lutes, but yeah, close enough. Lutes, okay. Yeah, and that all makes sense. Oh Lutes, okay. That makes sense. So yeah, it's like that that whole reveal thing. And then the part where they're going through all the lighthouses and she's explaining there's always a, a city with somebody super in control of it and there's always a hero who tries to fight that person. That always happens is what she's trying to say. That one's more like, generic, but yeah. That, that's more generic, but I, I like also that. Also a little weird. I don't... Mm, uh, yeah. Mm. But I like that scene when you're... It, it's interactive. It's not really a cut scene, but you're on you're on rails. But you're going from lighthouse to lighthouse, seeing different worlds, seeing different versions of you and Elizabeth running around. And sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're Wait. sad. Elizabeth is the daughter... Well, she's the child of the guy who is the tyrant, yes? She's uh, actually you the and ch- the main character, yes. She's the child... Or him Does and the main character. Does that mean that technically in the Rapture universe... She's Jack? Uh, I don't know. You'll have to explain that one. Well, Jack is the child of Andrew Ryan. Yeah, I guess yes. he kind of is. Yeah. I never played that DLC, so I don't actually know. Oh. Well, except they debunked that by actually having an Elizabeth in that series canon now. Yeah. Great. But she... That's, oh. I think that's because she came from her world or whatever, because she has the ability to do that. Yeah, I guess. Who knows? It's, it's, I don't know. It's just one random Elizabeth that showed up, I guess. I don't know. I think it might be the main Bioshock one. Timeline it is did a really fucked effect, up, by so the way. Much, yeah. With the addition of Bioshock, yeah. uh, the Infinite, the Bioshock yeah. timeline is yeah. weird. There is one, there's technically one Elizabeth left, because at the end of the credits, all of them vanish except for one. But, I'd uh, say I wish that games would stop trying to add to Bioshock 1 because it's ruining it. But, no. Bioshock pretty much ruined itself immediately after the cutscene I mentioned earlier. So, yeah. It fell apart a little bit, but, I mean, it was... A little bit is understating it, but... (laughs) Kind of needed to be that way for gameplay reasons. Otherwise... Well, the game would end, which, I mean, is okay, I guess, but yeah. not much of an end. I'd ending. be okay with that. Yeah. In- Infinite, Infinite, though, did a very go- good job of leaving clues for being eventual thing. Like, when you first see the statue of, uh, Lut- of uh, you know, Robert Lutes, it changes to the female version. 
And you don't even it's 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 very like you see something happening you're like okay that's weird why did that happen and then it's not till later that you find out yeah there's things going on and there's a reason for that uh so it's it's there's lots of clues all throughout that and I feel like if you're gonna make a good cutscene like that you need to have some sort of build up or some sort of yeah there's something more going on here. Zero, you're going to have to find the cutscene that you're talking about and link it to me at some point in the future. Because I will have no idea how to find that. It's like the final one. Like the final series thing. Okay. I'll just... Oh, I'll, and that's I'll not... I'll type a reminder. We're kind of stretching what we consider a cutscene. Because it yeah. is gameplay. It's just the only option is to walk forward. So, it's... Yeah. I don't know. It's, more, it's more of a cutscene in that, you know, you can't really interact too much. I mean, you could just stand at the door and not go in for however long you want, but then the game will never end. Oh. Well, it's iffy on whether that's a cutscene, then. Eh. It's very good, though. It's mm. well done. Mm. Alright. Uh, I, we... I just despise that game for what it did to the series. Although, to be fair, it was kind yeah. of falling apart before that. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, damn, Bioshock 2. Yeah, a lot of people hate that one. Goddamn Fontaine. Fucking Fontaine. That was such a good plot twist, and then they ruined it with a terrible, terrible villain. What plot twist? Alright, um, you guys want to move on? Because I think Kenshi fell asleep. I think he might have. Holy shit, did he actually? He's actually not responding. (laughs) Ken? (laughs) (laughs) Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thought we lost you there. Yeah, a little bit. You can't lose me. You okay, Ken? Yeah. <laughs> I keeled over from hunger for a second. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, any suggestions, Ken, now that we have you? <laughs> I already suggested mine. Uh, what was yours? Metal Gear Solid for the entire game because most of those cutscenes involve Raiden doing something awesome that he can't that you don't even get to play with him and you finally do you can't do anything like what he did in that game or um the last fight between Old Snake and Ocelot on top of the ship was awesome but then that led into a fight that you actually did that was still awesome so I don't know Okay, I'm not linking the entirety of Metal Gear Solid 4, <laughs> so uh, people can look that up if they're actually the entire cutscene. All of the cutscenes are pretty much on YouTube anyway, so you could just I watch it like a movie. I would not somebody made a movie out of it, yeah. Just combined all of them. A series of six movies, actually, but yeah. Wow, okay. I shouldn't be surprised by that Many either. Many series, because some of them just last like 20 minutes. Yeah. Jesus. Anyway. Uh, so, next topic is ruining a character, air quotes. I'm even doing it in the topic list. So, <laughs> I'm still doing that. So, uh, this is basically, you know, when any fan of a series or character just says, ruin forever. Sorry. <clears throat> Ruined forever. Yeah. Five ever. Yeah. So, I suppose you could call this a subset of fan dumb. As in, dumb as in stupid. Yeah. Let's see. So, yeah, ruining a character. This character was my favorite, and then you ruined him. Uh, yeah. A lot of people felt that way about Oscar in the Rebuild movies. She's not as huge of a bitch. <laughs> okay. People I, like that about her, I guess. I just kind of want to comment and say Hope from Final Fantasy XIII was ruined in the beginning before you even got to play as him. I don't think that counts for this topic, <laughs> but... I know, but I just the, wanted to say thank that. Thank you for the point. Yeah. I'm confused because I've never touched that game 
ever. You killed my mom. No, I was trying to help your mom up and she fell. You killed my mom. You're not going to blame the people who attacked the town. You killed my mom. We were fighting the guys who attacked the town. They destroyed the bridge we were on. You killed my mom. What? Shut up. Stop crying. That's <laughs> basically it. That's him for the almost the entirety of Final Fantasy Thirteen. So, yeah. Mopey characters. That sounds lovely. I hope people aren't expecting me to play Final Fantasy games at some point, because it's never going to happen. <laughs> You killed Play my one, mom. Some of the older ones, they're actually good, like well written and stuff. And yeah, you killed mm. my Especially mom. Six you're paying three, but depending on what you want. I, I just realized my profile pic is still that of me wearing the mask. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. We change that back now. I feel embarrassed. Oh. <laughs> There I'm we trying go. to think of ruined characters. Um, gosh darn it! Like uh, you could go to Nardo and Bleach for I, that's too example. easy. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. is. Also, Ichigo also too easy. Mm. Don't want to jump into the old fallback as to why those characters are ruined. We've already beaten that to death. Yeah, pretty much. So let's see. Um, Darth Vader. I suppose some kind... people... oh, oh, Darth that's Vader. Good one. Darth yeah. Vader kind of got ruined by the by the new trilogy mm-hmm. the prequels. Because you're like, oh, it's Darth Vader, he's super awesome and cool, and then it's like, oh, he's... And then it's Hayden Christensen, and he's <laughs> mopey uh... and emo. A huge uh... bitch, yes. He, he... killed them. I killed them all. He... <sighs> the women and the children, too. I slaughtered them like animals. <laughs> Gosh darn it. You have a cool You're really character. good at those kind of impressions. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm basically doing an impression of Andrew from Internet Boxes impression, but yeah. Episode, was, uh, episode episode two was just really bad. Yeah, episode three was actually pretty good. <laughs> in, in comparison to episode one and two. Oh god, you're right. Episode two was really bad. Episode one was a fucking train. Yeah, episode. that was. Yeah, that's the one I immediately thought of when it's like, oh look, that kid's gonna grow up to be Darth Vader. Why? <laughs> <laughs> he's so good at racing uh, that he can't catch Luke when he's in the Death Star. So wizard. <laughs> uh. Uh, yeah, okay. Gosh darn it. It's like it's uh, like you make a really good character, a really cool character, like this character has nothing to him other than the fact that he's super awesome. <laughs> I should make him have some emotional problems. Yeah. That's why he's so cool. Some might consider Eleanor from uh, Bioshock 2 to be ruined, depending on which choice they took first and which choice they took second. Eleanor is... Uh, the, the little sister that you need to save, or I suppose big oh. sister at that point. Okay. Because depending on if you save the little sisters or kill them, she's her personality varies a lot. Yeah, I'm not sure anything from Bioshock 2 could be considered ruined, logically speaking. Things have to be good for them to be ruined. Oh, they have to be good dang, I like that game, but I guess I'm alone in that opinion. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Uh like darn it. Um here's here's an example. Here's an example. Uh Sonic the Hedgehog kinda Yeah. Just Sonic in general or do you mean Sonic's, a character specifically? Sonic's been ruined many times. Yeah, a little bit. He's, he's 
Shadow. Yes, yes. There's many characters in the Sonic series, and Shadow is... Remember when he first appeared, and he was actually kind of cool, and then... Yep. And then they had a Shadow the Hedgehog game? And the then first they... thing you saw of him was him reloading a gun. Yeah. And they brought him back from the dead in what would have been a really cool sacrifice instead. And then there in was... fairness, they brought him back in uh, Sonic Heroes. Yeah, but, yeah, I know. But, you know, they really took the whole, oh, you know, there's lots of robot shadows a little bit too far. Mm. They always, I, I, they, I feel like they default on, here's a robot version of the of so-and-so character, now fight them. Because mm. there was Mecha Sonic, Metal Sonic, Robot Sonic. Yeah, there was four different versions of Sonic. There was a Mecha Knuckles, there was a Mecha Knuckles at one point. Uh, there was, there was... Robo, there was... Robo Sonic, <laughs> Cyborg Sonic. I'm not even joking. There's Metal Sonic and Mecha Sonic. They're two different characters. There's also Silver Sonic, which was the yeah. one in Sonic 2. I was joking. You know, there's a lot of Metal Sonics. It's, yeah. And then there's Tails Doll. There's Adamantium yeah. Sonic. <laughs> Tails Doll. Can you feel the sunshine? <laughs> uh, oh, Tails. That's, that's the wrong tune, actually. Never mind. Fucking sod it. Yeah. But, you got it close enough. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, so Sonic R, who actually genuinely, who cares? Mm. <laughs> uh Everybody Super Son Gracie. That's the tune I was doing, yes. I yeah. Actually can't remember the tune to Can You Feel the Sunshine? Uh it's an okay song actually, but you know, mm. as ridiculously upbeat, sugary pop tunes are, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, um, yeah, actually, here, here's an example of ruined character. Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. All right. Uh, ruined Pac-Man. Pac-Man Um, Pac-Man, the character? Pac-Man was, he was supposed a... to... He kind of actually did he have a character. character. He kind of did. He had his own game, he had Pac-Man World. Druggy. I'd pr- was that his character? I'd actually prefer that to what his current character is. They gave him is teeth. Is it really that bad? I haven't seen that. They gave him teeth. <laughs> oh. Does it doesn't seem pleasant. I, his design is enough for me. I, I've seen like one episode of that thing, and then I was like, no. 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 Um, Teeth makes the whole eating ghosts thing kind of gruesome yeah. in a strange way. Yeah, it does. A it bit, does. Yeah. I, I mean, also even before why they when he swallowed them whole, it. when he swallowed them whole, it still somehow maintained a little bit of the innocence of it. But what no, if, uh, imagine this. Teeth imagine means this. he's chewing them. What if, <laughs> Kirby, yeah. what if Kirby had teeth? What if Kirby had teeth? Uh. <laughs> I've seen pictures had, of that, actually. And, and he has horrifying. to chew after he, you know, swallowed somebody. Like, no, you do not give a character like that teeth. Is that kind of ruins Imagine the Kirby whole... would have, like, shark teeth, where there's, like, a thousand of them in every direction. Like, lining his entirety of his mouth. He'd look like a basking shark. Or Langolier. Like a what? Look, I kind of, I kind of imagine he would look he, something. He would like look like a basking one. shark, basically. In fact, he might already look like one. Mm. Have you seen a basking shark? Yes. <laughs> if you haven't, I will send. A, I will put up a link to what a basking shark looks like, and you all will be able to understand the true terror under the seas. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to type basking... Seriously. I don't know what's going on with my tongue at the moment. hope you can type better than you can talk. Mm. I'm not going to be mad Google this. knows what you mean. I just type basking tongue. Oh, good lord. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, That's great. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Well, okay. you know what I'm having nightmares about tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I told you. True terror under the seas, huh? I can't even swim, so. Yeah, that, that, that's something you don't want to run into. Ever. Ever. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we've completely lost the plot on this particular topic. I believe so. Basking yes. sharks are terrifying and nightmare fuel. Okay. I also think we've pretty much run out of time as far as yeah, we should probably full topics go. We're not going to have time to do a third one, even just like any regular one, let alone the big one that we've got on the list. Um <clears throat> So I think we should just move straight on into questions. Yeah. Any opposed? No, I'm good. Nah, I agree. I have less time than expected, so this is a good move. Okay. Uh, so, first question we have is from Ghost number, 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 number. Uh, if you were a servant in the Holy Grail War, uh, you know, face day night, seven, seven classes and all that, what class would you be? Um, Kenji, do you know do you know all the classes? Does everybody know all the classes, Slicer? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm aware enough. I'm, all right. Um, I'm gonna go straight, and I'm gonna just say, you know, uh, berserker. <laughs> Why are you a berserker? <laughs> I cannot yeah, I imagine zero as a berserker. <laughs> no. I actually, I, mean, I, I get the general idea of what he's going for because he's the hand-to-hand combatant. I actually anything. have a legitimate battle rage that I can get into. Um, I'm not Listen, even joking. You can pretend all you want, but we all know your lancer, okay? <laughs> I, I'm not even joking. I, I'm not even joking. When I when I start actually fighting somebody, I he brings the ruckus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really seem to type. But, yeah, I, I got some berserker in me. <laughs> I suppose you are repressed enough for it. Because, yeah. Uh, the idea of fighting somebody brings me sheer happiness, and I don't know what would happen if I were to actually go all out. And you know. I'm still going to say Lancer. Just, You're basically stealing my class. Well. You realize that, right? I... Yeah, Kenchi's a berserker. Kenchi, you're a berserker, too. We can both be berserkers, although I have a feeling that my berserker self is something I like to keep hidden, locked away. I enjoy being a berserker. Uh, I, I, can I just be a closet yeah. berserker? <laughs> <laughs> when I'm waiting on scripts to run, when I'm waiting at the printer on scripts to take to the anchors and to the production crew because we need scripts to run the show, you know what I do while I'm waiting for everything to print out? Because it's like hundreds of pages of stuff to print. I shadow box and I shadow I box and cold and throw kicks at nothing because no one's around. The reason it took me so I long. Case my, that one. The reason it took me so Sorry. long to get my black belt was because on several occasions when somebody would hit me hard, I would go kind of battle rage and then beat the crap out of them, giving lots of you know pain. Wow. He's sounding like he's being so serious, but I can't take it seriously. Yeah, nobody really, really? does. Nobody, you should have seen me in the sparring ring when I fought 32 people. Um, never mind. Yeah, so, um, if not Berserker, I could probably be Lancer, but, you know, I, I, I do have, or I used to have a bow staff, which is kind of like a lance if you put a spear at the end of it, troll it around and stab people. Yeah, you use Taekwondo, if I remember correctly, so yeah, yeah you're more of a Lancer. I use Muay Thai, so I like knees and elbows. Mm. And violent things that will cut you and make you bleed. <laughs> yeah. That's, I, that, inside Battle Rage aside, that I keep locked away very, very far. I, I, I'm I, serious. I'm not even joking. Like, you. Mm. And 90% of my battle strategy is to get you onto the ground where you can't get up. So I can just hit you without stopping. So, Slicer, I imagine Archer. Uh, maybe. Um, I'm actually torn between Archer, Caster, and uh, Assassin. I can't decide which one is the most bullshit, broken power with the most ruthless personality and uh, the most potential for exploitation of everything. Well, considering how I imagine you would fight, I imagine you would either use a rifle or an actual bow, so Archer seems the most sensible. 
Yeah, probably. Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty <clears throat> sure then. And I am far too comfortable in the dark to be anything other than assassin. So, mm. but you're or not a really agile. reclusive caster. I'm not agile. I don't have magic. I can't shoot a bow. I can't use swords. I can't fist fight. I can't use a lance. Uh, is there another one? There's probably another one. I, I've trained, I but we I probably can't do that either. Actual abilities. I thought whatever yeah. personality would fit best. I've, I've actually trained with several clothes. weapons. Yeah, me too. I've actually trained with several weapons, so I could do, if I really wanted to, I could probably do Saber, because I you know I kind of use a sword. Uh, I kind of have a sword too, so there's that. Yeah, the only weapon I can really use is a sword or a knife. Uh, yeah, I could probably get away with a lance, though. Then again, there's always Berserker, which I may not see the type, but uh, I think we lost Kenshi. Yeah, we did a little bit. Um, oh, he's, yeah, he got knocked out of the call. Yeah. All right, can you there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, yeah, I would be assassin. Not even a question. And there's yeah. your answer. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, just to say something real quick, I once had, I, I'm, uh, I did acting for a while, and I once played a very angry man who killed several people on stage, and I have to say that uh, my friends were scared of me after that. They were legitimately scared of me because I'm always so nice. And then when I shouted and was angry and was yelling, they terrified them. So I, I do have, I, I can have some anger that I have to channel into for stuff like that. But, yeah. So that's, yeah. Okay. Uh, next, next question. <clears throat> uh, this one's from Neil. Uh, he asks, how interesting do you think a story would be if it were written from the antagonist's point of view? Well, we've talked about it, and mm-hmm. we're pretty sure you're a little bit confused by what you mean by antagonist. Because you see, an antagonist is what goes against the protagonist, and the protagonist is the focal point of the story. So by definition the antagonist cannot be the, the focus of the story. Because if he was, then he would, by default, be the protagonist and not the antagonist. Mm. You think you got the only you thing I got... assume you can mean here is like uh, an extra scene at the end of a chapter. That kind of Omaki-style thing from the villain's perspective. Otherwise, it would... Yeah, it would turn into yeah. the protagonist instead of the antagonist. I mean, I think the, I, I think the only way he could do it was if it was like quote unquote antagonist, as in, Villain. this is a kind of a tropey type of here's the big protagonist, here's the antagonist, but the, it's it's more along the lines that that would only work if it was a villain character rather than just the antagonist, because by definition it can't be. Yeah. Would the movie Mega Mind count? Because that was a good movie. That was the one where the villain was the protagonist, yeah. yes? Yeah. yeah. That would be a villain protagonist and not an antagonist. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it, it seems pretty clear-cut, actually, so... Mm-hmm. Um, ask us next time what the villain thing would be like, because I really like things where it's from the villain's point of view, but... Yeah, like... there's a lot of good stories that are very much like that. Yeah. Death yeah. Note is one, Megamind, you mentioned, I don't know how it is, but it's been done that way. Yeah, there's quite a few that are like that, yeah. and they're um, often very good because villains make for interesting characters most of the time. So, Re Monster might end up becoming something like that. People were saying he might be like a, sort of a Demon King type character. Final he boss. Eats people. Yes. Yeah. He's the villain. Yeah, logical progression says that he would be more and more a villain as he gets stronger. <laughs> he actually eats everybody. I'm not even joking. If they die, he eats them. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he started from the very beginning as a villain race. Like, if any of his if any of his uh, fellow goblins die, he will eat them in private. Yeah. Okay. Because he gains power from it. Eh, uh, not really. After a while, I mean, it's after yeah, a few times, it's just, it doesn't do anything. It's, yeah. I think it's just because he can. Mm. Thinking about this real quick, this made me think of like the beginning of Assassin's Creed Three. 
This topic makes me think of the beginning of Assassin's Creed 3 when you played as Connor's dad oh, for the first part yeah. of it. Oh, and yeah. You he was the main character. Yeah, that, uh, uh, okay. that was that awesome. That was so good. That was that, awesome. That technically worked. That technically worked. I like that. Did and he, that technically is an antagonist story. Yeah. So, did so, he turn out to be the bad guy or something? Or yeah. I didn't play that yeah. game. Yeah, Hatham Kenway is... Uh, he so he is technically the boss of the main villain of the game. Oh. Well, okay then. Yeah, that counts. So there's the main villain of the game, and then there's Haytham, who is above him, but doesn't agree with the villain, and is trying to make things work peacefully, and is getting uh, yeah. undercut every time Spe- by the guy that's basically, following. Basically, everything you're doing in Assassin's Creed 3 in the beginning is setting things up so that your <laughs> other... So that your son can go and fix things. Sort of. Sort of. You're fucking things up for later. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> um, Technically, no, actually. Mm. You're not really fucking things up at all when you're playing as Hatham. That's all Charles Lee's doing later on, like a few years later. So. All right. Um, John, next question, I guess. Johnny asks what type of character yeah. in anime or just fiction you just don't find interesting at all. Use the Zero's word just doing again. I'm sorry, but we're getting off topic again. No, we weren't. We were talking specifically about the topic. Mm, we're just going to talk We were, about but I, I do actually need to go pretty soon, so I'd, I'd like to speed okay. that up. Yeah, we're running low on time. Right. What well, type of character in anime or just fiction you don't just find interesting at all? Uh, yeah, you can go first. Yeah, the uh, hardcore Tsundere character, I really... Yeah. Yeah. No. Just no. I don't like the stoic genius type. Like, uh, um, the only one I can name offhand would be Sasuke or maybe Uryu. Yep. I was actually going to mention Sasuke, but as a character that um, is supposed to be cool and overshadows the main character. Yeah. And doesn't uh, yeah. disappear after a while. They just remain a constant. Because. That's usually like, what the stoic genius does. That's yeah. his role most of the time. Yeah. yeah. Kamina, Kamina, he overshadowed the main character. That you thought he was the main character, but he died to make room for the new main to make room for the main character. Yeah, he pretty much that wasn't was the overshadowing main in a bad the... way though. That yeah, was that was like, an overshadowing yeah. example and follow. That's a, that's a good Not... example. It's just when they're like, "This is the this is this character," and look, he's so cool, and everybody likes him, and he's so cool, and why isn't he the protagonist? Then. Be so cool. Hmm. That was like mm, kind of a meta way to foreshadow, but yeah. Mm. I don't <sighs> like I don't like pacifist I don't like pacifist protagonists that somehow the series yes. evolves around. Oh. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. We need yeah. to go save the world, but we can't do it without fighting. Because we can use words and friendship. But I'll let all of my friends do the fighting and all the violent stuff for me. Yeah. I won't do it myself. Aang. Aang from Avatar annoyed me for so long. He eventually steps it up, but he has a lot yeah. of moments like that. Yeah. Um. I. I. There's another. There's another uh, character I just don't like, and that's the typical harem protagonist. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's that's hands down my most hated. Yeah, yep. weak, oblivious. Um, in t- in when there's co- when there's combat, when there's combat, typically this harem protagonist is the one that either is super super awesome or has all the girls fight for him because he mm. can't do anything. <clears throat> Skune versus I don't know who. I don't Skune know who actually gets awesome in the awesome in the manga role. though. Skune he does actually, eventually though. Yeah, yeah. But, he did I mean, actually first, get awesome. like the first two. Th- Two or three seasons. Yeah, I don't know. I just I don't like that because you just. Mm. I like Issei from High School DxD because he's a departure from that. Yeah, he's a bit oblivious, but he's an actual. He's an absolute pervert, and he's strong. Like he gets notoriously strong because mm. he's basically yeah. Yeah, you know, it's just I feel it's such an overdone thing. Maybe once or twice would have been fine, but when it appears every single time, it gets annoying. Yeah, it's hard to like a passive character. Mm-hmm. 
Your, your main character should try to be involved, I think, <clears throat> at least a little bit. You know? Yeah. So, uh, all right, we want to the next question. Yeah. This is the last question we have. We had quite a few. Uh, This is from Nero. He asks about what writing software we use, and do we post to any of the sites on fanfics.net? I kind of... I'm actually a member of uh, Archive of our own, but I haven't uploaded anything there. Hmm. Just thought maybe, you know, eh, why not? I might post some stories there. But, yeah, probably not, though. Um, as for writing software, I use the fanfiction.net uh, document art uh, manager. It keeps documents there for 90 days. I just refresh them when I need to by saving them. Uh, right on that? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. And I can't imagine that. Oh, that sounds horrible. You know, <laughs> you know, why, you know what I love about writing on that? The fact that even though my my laptop was completely destroyed, I still have all my files for uh, writing. It's difficult to argue with that, but Google Docs, mate. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, but I've been doing uh, like the doc or, manager. Or SkyDrive. You have uh, yeah. Windows 8. You've got SkyDrive by default. I've been using the doc manager, though, since uh, since back when I first started writing. That's all I... That, so it's more of a tradition more than anything else. Because um, I can't just write in Word. I can't write when the when the word counts right there. Like looking at me at the face, it's updating as I'm writing. And it just it doesn't work for me. And I've tried writing in uh, Drive, and I just don't like the setup. I like the Doc Manager, though, because I can insert uh, horizontal bars whenever I want. And I can actually see what my product looks quickly, like what it look, will look like on fanfiction.net. So if I want to try anything else, like tiny text, uh, I can see if that will actually work. Mm. It usually sure doesn't, enough. but yeah. Um, I actually do have tiny text working. Oh, cool. So I'm sorry. Which is cool. You I- might be the only one on the entire website that's got that working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I found a, I found a tiny text converter. Um, I told a few people about it, so you might be seeing more of it. But... Yeah, it appears in a few of my stories. Uh, you know, M1 and 470 does it. And, and so, I haven't talked about my... I haven't even mentioned my stories in such a long time. Gosh darn it. I need, yeah, it's I been need like two weeks. Back. I mean, it hasn't been that long. <laughs> but, yeah. I like the Doc Manager. It's, it's easy to use for me. It's what I'm used it to writing. not afraid of anything. And it's also... I can access it from any computer... Uh, without it being Google Drive, because I don't know. I don't really like using it. Uh, who else? Uh, just, before we move on, did you pronounce it Archive of Our Own? Yeah, you did. I did, probably. Oh, but wow. I can't call him on it for how my voice is at the moment. Yeah. Sorry. I, I thought I misheard that, but it's, it's okay. It's just a <clears throat> rampant eye twitch. It's okay. It's, it's a... It's a it, uh, I know it's archive, but I don't know. I pronounce no, it. No, it's archive. It's got a bit of garnish on it. No. Stop it. Uh. Okay, moving on. I use. I'm uh, sorry. I'm uh, I'm a writer. I don't say things. I write. Fair enough. Right. You're on a podcast. You say things and write. No, shut up. You're a liar. Stop. Stop poking holes in his logic. My logic is infallible. I am invincible. Shut up. Okay. Right. I use uh, just the basic LibreOffice. I just, it used to be OpenOffice, where they changed the name for seemingly no reason. I don't care. Um, I'm a member of basically every site, so I could post everywhere, but I don't. I just go to fan fiction. It's easier, I guess. Also, I haven't been banned before, so I have no reason to move. On a very unrelated note, this mask is made of very good material. Feels really nice. <laughs> He's still wearing it. It, so, it looks kind of, I don't know, bootleg. It might look cheap, but it feels really nice. <laughs> yeah, that was the word I was looking for. Cheap. The like the ear flap things. They kind of. Yeah, like, they're kind of they're kind of they're kind of broken, a little bit because they were kind of put in a suitcase, 
for a long time. Ah, yeah, that'd do it. So, but yeah, it looks. Mm. Oh, sorry. I just, never mind. Just go, Ken. Go. Let me. I, I I use Word to write because it's what I've used my entire life, except for when I use like WordPad on my old ass computer. Mm-hmm. But wow, I use yeah, I use <laughs> that's a throwback, right? <laughs> but I use Word. Um, I find it annoying to not write without Word. So I'll be down in the dumps so I don't have a Microsoft Word on whatever I'm writing on. Um, <clears throat> I did, I do have, like, I have a profile on yourfanfiction.com and um, something else, I think. It was back when that, I think it, like, two or three years ago, there was, like, rumors of, oh, so I, so your story's going to kick people's... Um, Profiles are going to get purge. deleted and shit. Yeah. yeah, the purge. Yeah, so I got something just in case, but nothing ever happened, so they're basically desolate. They're there still just in case something ever happens, but yeah. Yeah, your fan fiction is dead and has been for a while, I believe. <laughs> yeah, it didn't last very long. <clears throat> Comparatively. It was good while it lasted, though, in credit. It was good while it lasted. What happened to it? It was too expensive for them to host. Because uh. everyone went there <laughs> when uh, the purge was happening. So it's they got flooded. And, of traffic, yes. Ah. And they couldn't afford the bandwidth, so they had to shut it down. Wasn't well, that unfortunate? Mm. <clears throat> the arc sunk. Too successful. The, Go the arc sunk, huh? Mm. Everybody go on the arc. No, wait, no, wait. Oh. Yeah. There's uh, a maximum so... occupancy here. Read the sign. So, uh, I use Open Office because I apparently didn't realize that they changed the name. I guess. Uh, mostly because I don't want to pay for Microsoft Office. So, there you go. And, uh, I only post on fanfiction.net. I've considered putting stuff up on HP Fanfic Archive, but that uh, is mostly porn right now. So <laughs> yeah, I d- that yeah, I, that's I don't where have all the porn I follow it. is actually most yeah. of it. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, I'm probably not going to put my stuff up on there. <laughs> Doesn't fit. Uh, that's pretty much it. So there you go. Yeah, the reason I don't, I used to use Word, but then I changed to OpenOffice because it was easier, and my friend stuck with Word, and uh, the files that my OpenOffice creates just by default, Word does not like. Like, it'll either not read it at all, or it will destroy the formatting completely. Yeah. So I, I have a hate of Word just because of that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, final topic is recommendations. So, who wants to go? Uh, let me uh, check if I still have it open. I got I one. Would, I would name a recommendation, but then my laptop died. Mm-hmm. I was trying to fix that. Tail fell off again. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I get reminded of the sad things, like my parents going on a cruise in Cabo... Without me. I'm not taking you. I'm not taking Why me. would you want to go on a cruise? Who wants to be on a yeah, boat? Th- Fuck boats. They're not especially fun. Really I'll, not. I'll tell you that from experience. And, or, or, them, or when they went to Disneyland without me. Or or when my laptop broke and I didn't have anything to fix it, so I couldn't write. And Eeyore. I, I was doing good for a while, and then you guys reminded me that I'm about to Because it's the way you sound every time. Like you sound, you sound like there's a physical difference in your body when you're sad. <laughs> well, I am jumping over is. considerably I more. Over right now. Yeah, I kind of am. Yeah. All right. Anyway, recommendations. Uh, who should go first? Whoever wants to go first. I don't care. All right. I'll. I'll go since I got it up, and I might need to leave in a few minutes. So, uh, 
Oh, Shattered Blade, a Sekere Fate Stay Night crossover based pretty heavily on uh, Gabriel Blessings. That's his yeah. name, right? Yeah. He, he, um, he, he kind of was famous for that Sekere and Fate Stay Night. So it, it pretty much starts from that. Uh, what's his name? I don't know why I can't remember his name. Whose name? The main character of Fate Stay Night. Shiro. And I just, Shiro. Shiro. That's it, Shiro. Okay, I don't know why I couldn't remember that, but... He he shows up at the airport in Shin Tokyo and gets sent through scanner and blah blah blah. He's he's the son of uh, he's Minato's brother basically, and it uh, just kind of continues from there. It's less preachy than uh, Gabriel Blessing stuff. There is some monologuing, but it's not half a chapter of exposition. So it, it's it's pretty good. You know, I should update my Sekirei fic. Yeah. Do you want to? Should. That's the important topic. That's the important no. thing. <laughs> don't. I don't want to do anything right now. God damn it, Zero. <laughs> uh, you need to find a video game to play and just mindlessly do whatever until I've, you're yeah, I hear out the, of I hear there's a Steam sale going on. You could pick something up. <laughs> I've actually been playing you, Xenoblade, which has been kind of fun. He would really? need to redownload uh, Steam. But no. nothing pulls me out of this bleak darkness. I'm gonna which go I find a- myself. I'm gonna go ahead and recommend you guys play Xenoblade if you haven't played it. It's kind of fun. What what system is it on? It's on the Wii. Oh, no one's gonna play that game. <laughs> well, <laughs> no I one's have a play Wii. That game. I just, I just uh, don't really want it. It came out. And it, it was. Xenoblade was so popular that people had a humongous petition to get it um, actually brought to the U.S. And it was just a gigantic project. It was part of Project like Rainfall or something like that. And it came to the U.S. alongside Last Story and one another game. And it's got met critical praise and success across the entire world. So I recommend you play Xenoblade. Well, okay, I'm a little more open to the idea now. I still don't like looking directly at my Wii, though, because uh, mm. <laughs> it's a gaudy gold color. It's the only one I can find. <laughs> I have a Wii as well. It's not mine, but it's my house. That makes it yours. <laughs> it's not mine. I've never touched it. Literally, never touched it mm. once. Mm. Out of principle. Really? Yes. What, what principle is that? I don't touch Wii. I would touch Nintendo. <laughs> That's a good principle. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, uh, That's what I thought about the PS3 until my fucking Xbox broke twice in a row. So yeah. I'd was that an that intentional now. setup, Ken? Was that intentional? Um, no. <laughs> okay. It was natural. Natural and free flowing, was it? Yeah. <laughs> I was in. I was in a dark pit of abyss. A dark abyss of sadness, but then. All of a sudden, I laugh, and now I feel good. All right, let's move on. All right. Thank God. Robot Zero is gone. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, who else is recommending? I got one. Okay, Ken. All right, I got one. Is a Final Fantasy X and Seven Cross, though it's only listed in like the Final Fantasy X listing. It's called The Gunslinger by writer Nataku's Wrath. And... Vincent is the main character from Seven, pretty much. And they added pretty much they added pretty much stuff to the whole Yevon conspiracy about how Aeons and everything are just like corrupted, stolen summons from Seven and everything. And it's not Vincent owning people. I mean, he owns a lot of people, but they incorporated the weapons enemies from Seven into it. And it's really well, it's really well written. I dig it. So, but wouldn't yeah, be Vincent I don't, if he wasn't kicking ass. So I yeah. mean, yeah. I love servers. That gun is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, right, Casey, if you don't have a recommendation, you could uh, maybe suggest some of the games you got that you've been enjoying in the Steam sale. If you have played any of them, anyway. Okay. Uh, I recommend. What have I been playing? Game Dev Tycoon I don't recommend because the system is poor. It's mm. 
you know, there's been a couple of games like this, uh, make your own games, uh, be a game studio, try and make successful titles and stuff like that, and eventually, like, make a console and, you know, dominate the market and stuff like that. It's not very good, specifically because to do well in the game, you have to handicap yourself. You have to make a good game and then might make a slightly better game and then a slightly better game than that and you have to go tiptoeing forward rather than actually genuinely trying to make the best games you can because the way the review algorithm algorithm works is it's based on the last game you made and nothing else so if you make a really amazing game then the last game you made will be this amazing thing that you can't top yet because you haven't got new technology or anything to build on. So you won't be able to beat yourself, and the next few games that you make will be shit, even if they're just as good as the last one was. So mm. That does sound pretty terrible, yeah. It's a really terrible system, and it doesn't work. So it's not fun to play. Mm. So I don't recommend that one. Uh, people have been talking about modding it so it makes more sense, but they haven't yet. So, And Prison Architect, I don't recommend getting if you're running an NVIDIA card, because uh, I am. it doesn't work on those. Oh, no, no. I couldn't run well, that either. Well, it does, but you have, to, you have to roll back your graphics drivers, Ew. which I'm not going to do. Ew, no, no. That sounds uh, really counterproductive. Yeah. DuckTales is fun, so I recommend that. It's probably still on sale. Duck Not tales. on the flash sale that it was, but woo -hoo. Yeah. DuckTales. <laughs> Good game. Launchpad. Yeah, he's in that game as well. Is it the remastered version or just the regular one? Yes, it's the right. remastered one. Uh, and Speedrunners. I played like five minutes right before this podcast. It's pretty fun. Yeah, I already planned that at some point, hopefully. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my recommendations. Oh, and Fable is also a good game. And it's currently on the Flash sale, but no one is going to be able to buy it based on this recommendation because this won't be out for six days minimum. So, oh, um, too bad for you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, I actually have a uh, Fable Anniversary is what I did. I got that because why not? Because yeah. HG. Yeah, and again, uh, full price is actually like six quid. So you know. Yeah, I was gonna say exactly... it doesn't seem like a very expensive title. It's so it's two bucks right now. It, it's it's eighty percent off. Yeah, it's not exactly wallet breaking even at full price. So yeah, Metal Gear Rising is fifty percent off. I already own that game. I know. I own it, too. Uh, Just saying, you know. But everybody hearing this, it, those sales don't matter to you. You're done with your sales. None for you. Okay, I'm going to vote on the 2D retro category for the community choice. Yeah, that's why I voted. Maybe this time it will win. And I Bro will be able force. to get the game that I want. <laughs> Bro force. Which you game do you want? Uh, Hoffman Hero. Ah... Uh. I want Bro Force. Give me some of that Bro Force. Then again, Darksiders 2 is on the opposite category. I own Darksiders 2. Yeah, so do I. But I don't have it on PC, so that'd be okay. I'd like to get that. I deleted that like a few days ago off my computer. I, just, I, I got like 20% oh. through it and I stopped caring. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Um, I guess <clears throat> all that's left is to wrap up the episode. Yay, it's peanut so... butter jelly time. Before we go, yeah. thanks for all the questions, guys. It's great to see you. Yeah, yeah that was a lot yeah, of questions. Sending them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Even if you don't also, them. Yes, yes, everybody who sent us topics, we received them. They are in the spare topics list as we speak. Yeah, even if we, yeah. Don't, even if we don't use your question directly, it'll at times lead to a topic that we actually do use. So yeah. please send them. Eventually, our dream is to get hundreds and hundreds of questions, and then we can actually pick things. Maybe. We can lord over which ones we choose and which ones we deny on a throne. 
<laughs> Solid gold. We'll leave things out and people will be disappointed. We can just do question episodes where we answer thousands and thousands of questions and each take like two seconds for each question. It'd be great. We'll call it mailbag. Uh, mailbag. Yeah, that'd be great. Or fan dust or something. I don't know. Fan debris. Fan dirt. Whatever is on <laughs> fan. I like that fan dust <laughs> idea, actually. Yeah. Although it is kind of dismissive of. <laughs> so. I'm just trying to figure out something catchy with fans. Uh, yeah, you, you you people's comments are just dust to us. We will just brush you. Um, um, fan power because fans are powered by electricity. Maybe fan power that sounds is lame. Or something with electricity. Maybe I don't know. Like about outlet. Oh, maybe fan outlet. 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 Maybe. Maybe. Brain yeah, outlet. Yeah, it's we're really taking this fan thing pretty far. A little bit. And I love it. Is it is our theme. I mean, that's kind I of. I love it. It's, Got to push the brand, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, I forgot what the name is of the guy that does auto tune. You went robot there for a second. T Pain. Oh, I did. T Pain. Yes. T-Pain. Thank you, T Pain. That was. <laughs> T Pain. Uh, all right, we're uh, over two hours. So- Thank you for listening to the Fanflix Podcast episode 40. If you'd like to get in contact with us, like we just talked about, you can do so through the box page, the comments, our own personal profiles on fanfiction.net, or through the YouTube channel through the comments. Uh, remember to subscribe, because we've got like 20 subscribers, and yeah, we get 80 people who watch the fucking podcast video. It's weird. It's the discrepancy, and I don't like it. We have 54 so, uh, subscribers and over 100 views per uh, podcast episode now. No, we don't. We have like 20 subscribers. I looked recently. 54. Uh, let me just double check this because fucking Zero's lying to me. I don't want to call him out on it. <laughs> da, da, da. And the flux. Manager. I, I think it's actually higher than 20. It was like 44 last time I checked. 54. It's not 54. It's 16. I'm looking at the page right now. It's a subscribed 54. I'm looking at the... Oh, this is the recent... Okay. I'm an idiot. I'm looking at the recent statistics. We've got 16 in the last uh, 28 days. So, yay, I guess. Yeah. We're really dragging on this ending, by the way. It's yeah, been okay, like five okay, minutes. Okay. So, well, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for listening to the Final Podcast episode 40. Bye now. <laughs> Bye. Bye, finally. Finally.